So the Samye project and Samye Ling itself are named after Samye, which of course was the first Buddhist center in Tibet. So when the Dharma came from India into Tibet, that was the first center, a place where the Dharma interfaced with the local culture and then took root, adapted some of the forms possibly, but certainly not the purity of the message. And uh, so that's how Samye, Samye Ling and the Samye project relate back to that because it was the, the first Tibetan style um, Buddhist center of this kind of scale to be established in the West. It was obviously a, a, a spiritual project. It was clear that Rinpoche had a spiritual intent behind this. Um, he did everything properly. He invited great teachers to come and teach and to bless the place, to bless the very ground it was built on. Um, he carried out either himself or had the teachers that had come carry all sorts of consecration rituals and he'd say, oh, it's a particularly auspicious day today to do this, to begin that. So the whole thing wasn't just putting up a building and then starting to teach in there. It was completely integrated process. He always said that he wanted to create a holy place. And he said afterwards many times, you almost don't need to go to India and to the Holy Lands now. What makes something holy? It's that great masters have been there, that they've blessed it, and that they've given teachings there, with the prayers that have been made there. This is a holy place. He really felt he'd achieved the building and establishment of a holy place in the West. But of course, there's a kind of human side to it as well, in that all of the people that were involved in this project benefited so much. He once talked to us about how it said that um, anyone who contributes to it, whether it's as a sponsor or a helper, even if it's just a small thing that they put one stone on top of another, or whether they work on it for a long time, that something special happens. And he said that as long as there's one stone standing on top of another as a remnant of the Samuel project, all of the benefit of everything that happens there ripens in the stream of being of everyone who's been involved in it. So he was basically creating a field of merit for us where we could do something useful with our lives and something that would bring, bring benefit to so many people who come here week in, week out and make this connection with the Dharma and where the Dharma can actually start to interface with the Western world. And let's see where it goes. He's preserving the completely pure teachings as well as preserving a place where the Dharma can interface and find ways to connect with people because we desperately need it in our country. So this is one of it, another aspect of his great achievements. And of course, Lama, Lama Yeshe says, you know, my brother was building Samya in the West. That's the vision. But if you ever ask Lama, uh, Rinpoche himself, he would say, oh yeah, it could be like that. So now it's here for everyone to see and to use and to benefit from the Samya project, all as the result of the instigation of Akon Rinpoche and his devotion to his guru, the 16th Jawa Kamapa. But it's much more than a building. It's become a way that so many people who have been involved in it could benefit and he sometimes talked about as being a practice in itself for the accumulation of merit and the purification of our obscurations. All of that were part of his skillful means of making this project available for us to contribute to. I think it's no doubt that uh, Akarim Uche was a very unusual Lama. Um, I remember maybe in the last year or so of his life, he was out on the building site pushing a wheelbarrow around. And I said to him, Rinpoche, you must be one of the only tulkus in the world who push a wheelbarrow. You look so happy and so joyful. And he says, yeah, maybe I am one of the only tulkus, but there were some during the Cultural Revolution as well, had to push wheelbarrows. <laughs> Whenever he had time, he'd be busy with all his international duties. But if he had time, 
he'd come to the building site and he'd always take the lowest job. Typically, he'd be sweeping up and clearing up, talking with people, interacting with people, encouraging them, almost doing nothing but making the whole thing happen. In August of the last year of Rinpoche's life, we had a party in the village. Was some, people, some of us had a, a 60th birthday. It was quite a gathering and we invited Rinpoche and he came, it was fantastic. And he came to, it seemed to be with his old friends, singing and dancing and just, this was the last year of his life and uh, talking with everyone and spending a few quiet moments with each of us. Um, and when I was sitting talking with him, um, he said he just kind of went quiet and he came out with something that really portrayed his humility. And he said, we were talking about the Samya project and you know what the, it is, it's a major thing for the world. And uh, he said, you know, there are so many thousands of uh, monasteries in Tibet and there are so many thousands of Kadju monasteries. And some of these Kadju monasteries have got more than one tulku. He said, there must be tens of thousands of tulkus. And he said, I don't know why it was me that it fell to to do this job. <laughs> and I said, well, Rimache, I think myself and my friends feel like that, that um, you know, there must have been so many great practitioners as well sc scattered through Tibet. And for some reason, we got to help you do this. And it must have been some aspiration from the past. He said, yeah, of course, we've all been together thousands of times and thousands more times to come. He always talked as if he wasn't a teacher. He said, I'm not a teacher, I'm just people's friend. What a friend, you couldn't hope for anybody better. And this is one of the great things of the lost to so many people throughout the world. He's such a special spiritual friend. Um, I remember in the early days he used to say to us, you know, what I'm saying to you now when I'm giving teachings, it might just seem like words. He said, but one day, these will land in your heart and they'll grow like seeds and then you'll realize what it is I've told you. And it uh, seems to me really that this is a great thing that he did. He really brought the Dharma to the West and I really hope that we can do justice and to honor what he's given us. And in projects like the Sami project and in the work that we all have to carry on with, I hope that we can do justice to what we've been given by Rinpoche. That's all I've got to say.